Well, we're just a few minutes away from the Chancellor of the Exchequer's uh, first spring statement. Not just the first spring statement, but the first statement that he's given as Chancellor, if you can put it that way, rather than a budget. The tone is expected to be positive, and we've been warned not to expect any big announcements. So, uh, let's ask our panel of experts. Joining me are Miata Van Buller, who's Chief Executive of the New Economics Foundation, Mark Littlewood, Director General of the Institute of Economic Affairs, and Gerard Lyons, who co-chairs Economists for Brexit. Welcome to you all. Um, he says it's going to be boring. What are you looking out for? So I think the economic backdrop for him um, is still tough. So we're expecting to see, you know, some marginal improvements, maybe growth forecasts, but the big problems haven't gone away. So for many people out there, they're still feeling the squeeze after a decade in which their pay packet hasn't grown. Um, we know that for big chunks of the country, they still haven't yeah. recovered. So that's the background. What, 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 what's going to be the test? So like, for me, for the big test is we're expecting to see a rosier picture of public finances. Will he use the breathing room that he's been given in order to try and tackle some of these big economic problems? And that's partly about spending, but that's also about structural reform. So for me, the big test is you've got some massive challenges in the country. Are you using the slightly rosier picture you have on public finances to actually start tackling them? Well, I hope he's going to be boring, uh, Adam. I mean, one of, the, uh, one of my frustrations with the previous Chancellor of the Exchequer was we got a spring budget, an autumn budget, emergency budgets, and journalists were speculating about which rabbits was he going to pull out of which hats as an act of political theatre. I'm interested to hear from the Chancellor what the update is. It will be interesting to see how rosy and optimistic that is. He's clearly signalled in advance it's going to be positive news. But I rather hope, with one exception, that he doesn't start making structural reform or spending commitments, it would be interesting, and I know Fazal Islam was saying to you earlier, what he's doing with this £3 billion that he's got down the back of the sofa, which we're supposed to spend if there is not a deal, that really should be being allocated now if, if the government still believes that no deal's a possibility. So that's the only area in which I think he needs to get into the weeds. On the rest of it, I'm just interested in hearing his forecasts, whether they turn out to be as accurate or as inaccurate as previous <laughs> Treasury forecasts remains to be seen. Jared Lance, what are you looking out yeah, for? Well, while it would be nice if he went into lots of detail, he's already, the Chancellor, made clear that this is not a fiscal statement, so he's not going to go into the taxes and the spending in detail. Should it be? So, is that really right? To um, do? Well, I think there are certain areas where he should allocate the direction of travel. Uh, but what I think he will do today, he's going to keep it short, but I think it's going to be very focused and positive, focused on the economic update and on the budget numbers. But I think it will be positive. The key story I think that we should be focusing on today is that the budget deficit and the government finances are improving far faster than the markets or the people in the Treasury expect. And I think that's going to continue to be the case in the next couple of years. Remember, two years ago, the Treasury thought there would be doom and gloom if we had a vote for Brexit. We are now seeing the reality. Consumer confidence is high. But one thing maybe I'd like the Chancellor to do is be a bit more positive because business confidence is still low and I think what we need to see both from the Chancellor and other leaders in the government is a more upbeat message. Brexit's not about making the best of a bad job, it's about realising the opportunity. So I'd like to see a focus on the numbers, a positive statement, but if anything, well, it's got to be uh, okay, more upbeat. But, but just hearing there about the three billion he's yeah. set, he set aside, I mean, does he need basically even if it's going to be sunlit uplands uh, when Brexit happens, there will be a shock, will there, next March? And does he need, is that where he needs to keep no. his cushion, if you it, like? In terms of the three billion, that's about preparation for a no deal. Now, it's, we were chatting about this beforehand, the three of us. It's unclear what he will do today. My expectation is that he will uh, tell us that that has been allocated. But I would imagine, given that the red book is not there today, he'll have to wait to the red book in the autumn before we can see the detail of how that has been allocated. So I think it's a difficult for one for him because three billion is a lot to spend on the prospect of a no deal when you've got some bigger challenges in the country to deal with. And there is a trade-off in that. You know, you can spend that money on easing the pressure uh, for people on the ground. You can spend that money on housing um, rather than the prospect of, of, sort of contingency spending for a deal that we may or may not get. Um, but that's the choice no, that you'll have to three make. Billion. I mean, it's actually preparing the economy for what's going to happen, which is going to be, whether you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, a very big change. Absolutely. So he's got to prepare the economy. But for me, preparing the economy means dealing with the big fundamental structural problem that, quite frankly, 
Brexit is not going to solve. Uh, so whether we're talking about the living standards crisis, whether we're talking about the housing crisis, yeah, whether we're talking about the rebalancing of the economy, Brexit is yeah. not a solution to those things, well, so he's got to tackle there, them. There, there is no bigger issue than Brexit. Yeah, what would you like to hear him do? So I would, like, I would like him to say, we've put this three billion aside, we have now worked out, as a this is a contingency, we, we, it may end up being money wasted because we end up getting a fantastic deal, that's a possibility, so but I would like him to say we've worked out we probably need to spend 100 million here on this software package, you know, we need to spend this on making sure the ports are compliant, we've got it all ready just in case there isn't a deal, rather than him saying I've got it tucked in my top pocket but I'm not giving you an update. Yeah, I, well, there's a combination of factors that I think are important. I think it's clear that austerity is dead as such in terms of the way we had the tactical changes under Osborne in particular. But we still need to get the public finances on a much better shape. In terms of the three billion, it's not that that's at the expense of other parts of the economy. I think your question touched on the key issue. We need to upgrade the ports and things like that. The head of the HMRC has... Um, I think testified seven times to say what great progress is being made. Now, whether we have a deal or no deal, we need better facilities at the ports. So that's money that I think would be well spent regardless. In terms of the actual uh, fiscal numbers, we need to actually still get the budget deficit basically to become a budget surplus. So, okay, so uh, carry on. Yeah, uh, but there's no doubt that we need to, at the same time, be allocating money okay. for longer-term investment. And one good thing that this Chancellor has done in recent budgets that its predecessor hasn't done is kept up government investment spending. We could argue whether it should be higher, but at least we haven't cut that, whereas the current consumption aspect has been squeezed. So in terms of how the quality of the spending, you could argue it has improved. Um, obviously, okay. there's issues as to whether you should spend more or less. But if we are to spend more, then we need to be growing the economy stronger or we need to be raising taxes. And I don't think in the globalised economy, and to get the economy stronger, we should be raising taxes. So it's about making sure the economy is on the right footing and monetary policy therefore also comes in and that's outside the remit of the Chancellor. Now, we do know one thing he's going to talk about is plastics. Um, Great increase in public awareness from things like Sky Ocean Rescue amongst the public. I mean, you tend to take a fairly libertarian approach to these things. What, what sort of things should we be considered to cutting plastic use and, and getting plastic Well, it might out? be that he does indicate some taxes on this. And uh, I'm you're right to say, Adam, I'm rather sceptical that these little nudge taxes actually do much good. But if we are going to tax things that we, in the economic jargon, in order to internalise the externality, i.e. in order to recognise the cost that these things are have, ha having on our natural environment or the rest of it, fine. But I don't think it should be a revenue raiser. The revenue he raises from taxing bad things should be offset on reducing taxes on good things, on neutral things. So if we are to see any indication on his thinking on tax, I'd be surprised if I mean, he actually announced... could spend the money on recycling, for example. Oh, he could spend it on recycling or he could reduce taxes. This is something that the Conservatives yeah. haven't even considered doing in a meaningful way for many budgets. So I think any moves on plastic is a positive step, without a doubt. Um, but it is a drop in the ocean, <laughs> to coin a phrase, insofar as actually plastics is one part of a massive environmental challenge that we've got. Um, and when you look back at the kind of government's 25 year environmental plan where they talked first about this, actually you have to wonder whether it matches up to the scale of the problems on climate change or the yeah. scale of... But I mean, climate change in a sense, you know, we do have the Paris Accords and, and, and previous things like that. We do have... Uh, taxes on fuel use, carbon taxes... But they are nowhere near enough, well, all right, given but, the but urgency and the scale but of the challenge. But now that, in a sense, people are focusing on this issue of plastics, what, what do you see as the sort of measures he should be considering? So I think tax measures um, and nudge-type measures have worked before in other areas, so actually it's a good step forward. But I think it has to be part of a kind of bigger plan on the environment um, because tackling uh, plastics deals with a really important issue but it's only a subset of the much much bigger problem that we have to face. Yeah well today I think he might outline that there are a few areas that he's going to not do the detail on today but okay. put it down.